When you practice finding the chords in a key, you're getting yourself much more familiar with a group of chords that are often used, put together to play a song or a piece of music. It'll help you get comfortable with where chords fit in a key and actually recognizing things like that, where they come from, getting familiar with these areas of the piano and the shapes is only ever gonna make things quicker and easier to learn. In the last video, I talked more about the theory of how this works, so you can check that out after this video if you want to. But in this one, I'm gonna get a lot more practical and show you five ways that you can practice this to get the most out of it and actually get it under your fingers. Okay, so the first thing to do, the best place to start is to simply go up and down the chords in their basic root position. Don't only practice it this way or you get stuck only being able to find things by going through the sequence first, which is why I've got some other methods too. I'm going to quickly recap what the chords in a key are in C major if you're not sure. Then I'm going to show you how to practice this so you can get confident at it in keys with a mixture of black and white notes where it can become a bit trickier. We're just going to focus on major keys, but you can apply all these same methods when you come to do it in minor keys as well. The first note in the C major scale in the key of C major is C. So starting a chord from note one is called chord one. The chords we want to practice first are the three note chords, the triads, we get by playing every other note in the scale like this. Play one, skip one, play one, skip one, play one. We call this playing in thirds. You probably recognize this as a C major chord. All we then do is move the whole shape up through the scale. Now I'm starting on the second note of the scale, so this is called chord two. I'm still playing every other note in the scale from here though. I'm gonna suggest just starting out using fingers one, three, and five for every chord. If you're comfortable, you can switch between one, three, five, and one, two, four, if you like. But for simplicity, you may find it easier to do this just for every chord. So I was on chord two, and then we just keep moving through the scale until we get to the top. Move up, chord three, chord four, chord five, chord six, chord seven, and back to chord one. That gives us all the basic three note chords we get by playing every other note of the scale. And when we do this in any key, we get this pattern. The same types of chord start from each number of the major scale, any major scale. You can learn more about why after this in the previous theory video, but you just need to know the pattern at the moment for this. Knowing that sequence is gonna help us with the rest of the practice. So let's look at F major though, which has a black key in it. Here's the F major scale. So in this major key, we have a B flat. The really important tip is that you keep in mind the overall scale shape on the keyboard. So we've got this wave up on the B flats here. And as we move through the chords, you wanna try and pay attention to when one of your fingers is about to pass B because you don't play B, you play B flat instead. So the first chord is fine, but then the next chord, chord number two, that finger is gonna to move to the B flat go up again, the next one's fine, but now the thumb is about to move to the B flat, so we need to watch out for that. And with these chords with a black key in, we'll need to hold our hand slightly further forward. So there, if I hold my hand too far back, my thumb can't reach. You don't want to twist. Bring your hand forward as you move through. The next chord is fine, it's all white keys, and again. But then the next chord, look, this note here, the next one in the scale is there, that B flat. So I need to adjust it, make sure you don't play the B natural by accident, and then back to F major at the top. And again, on the way down, keep your eye on the overall scale shape and watch out for when one of those fingers is about to pass the B flat. So it's really important that we practice this as slow as you need to go. We can work on getting a bit faster just so you can force yourself to recognize these things quicker, but it's not something we need to work out till we get it lightning fast. And as you're moving through the chords to stop things feeling stiff and awkward, getting your fingers in a muddle, you just need to make sure that once you've played a chord, you need to lift up, let the weight release, let your arm feel like it's holding its own weight up, don't dig your weight in the keys, so your wrist can be loose and relaxed. And that way you're above the next chord to come down on it and sort of use gravity and the weight of your arm as well as your fingers together. So play a chord, up, relax, move, and then come down on the next one. Up, relax, so now my wrist is feeling loose here, move, and down. Going all the way from the bottom to the top may feel like too much for the first go. So just build up to it. Start off with just one to two. One, two. Do that a few times till it feels easy. 
Then you add on the third chord and you're just doing one new thing. So now one, two, three. One, two, three. Make sure you can do that comfortably. One, two, three. Then stretch yourself to four and then five and then eventually all the way to the top. Once you've gotten used to one of the keys and you've warmed up, put a metronome on to force your brain to find the next chord by a certain time. So I'd start off with just doing every four clicks. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Set the metronome as slow as you need to start with, and you can work on building up the speed a little bit, but like I say, we don't need to get this super fast. And a really helpful tip with that is to use the time on the chord you're on to think about the next one. So as I'm playing this chord, one, I'm using this whole time, and I've already got the next one in mind. Make use of the time, don't wait till the last second before you find it. I do have a worksheet available from my website which includes all the theory you need to understand chords in major and minor keys, as well as a complete list of all the chords in every key as a handy reference for when you're practicing. I also want to let you know that over on Patreon I'll be starting a series for supporters over there of guided practice videos going through the chords of every key and working on some of these methods where you can follow along to help you get to grips with this stuff yourself faster. There's a link for both those down below in the description. When you have a greater mixture of black and white keys, that might feel a bit harder. So if we look at D major, that's got two sharps in it. Let's look at the D major scale. So we need to keep our eye on that line in the scale and watch out for the F sharp and the C sharp. So the first chord straight away in the key of D major is gonna be a D major chord. Remember, it's every other note in the scale. We've got to try and picture that shape and ignore the notes that aren't in the scale. When we move up, that's gonna be all right. It's all white notes. But then the next one, our thumb, is about to pass the third note of the scale, which is black. And our fifth finger is about to go onto a black note C sharp instead of C as well. So that's one to watch out for. The next one is good, all white notes. Then our middle finger is about to pass the C sharp. Then the next one, our fifth finger is about to pass the F sharp. And then chord number seven, our thumb is about to pass onto the C sharp. And then we're back to that D at the end with the F sharp on the third finger. It can be challenging because we're following three notes moving through the scale at the same time, which is why you need some helpful tactics like remembering which type of chord should start from that scale. So here, if you got to chord number five, and you remembered it was a major chord and you see that A is note number five and you already know A major, you could find that by itself, then that's usually gonna make the chord easier to find. The next thing to practice is just splitting up the major chords and the minor chords. You can do the diminished as well, but there's just one of those, so it's a little bit easier. This is really just gonna help you get used to which type of chord starts from which point in the scale, which ones are majors, which ones are minors, and we always really need to know that. All we're gonna do then is go up and down the major chords in a key first. Remember, that is one, four, and five. So if we're in G major, that's G, C, and D major. So we just go through those chords and you can just literally go up and down, just get used to them. You don't have to do this for ages, just a little bit to get really comfortable. And then just do the same things with the minor chords. Remember that's numbers two, three, and six. So in the key of G major, which we're in, that equals A minor, B minor, and E minor. After going up and down then, trying to learn the sequence of which chord starts from where and splitting those into majors and minors to help, then we need to kind of put the whole thing together and test yourself finding random chords. You can do this by yourself. It may be easier if you have someone to help you though, and it is something I'll be doing on those Patreon guided practice videos where obviously I can show you the answer as well. Just randomly call out the numbers between one and seven and then find the chord starting from that number. Remember to picture the scale at all times. You're playing every other note, locking inside the scale, and think of what type of chord you should be playing to help. Keep it going until it feels like you can find them pretty easily. Try and get a little bit quicker if you can when you're ready. And if you need, you could start with a smaller range of numbers. And if any chords feel trickier, do those ones more. The next step to challenge yourself more is to move up and down again, but this time using inversion shapes. And you can use inversions and go through the other methods as well. Starting off with the first inversion, and once you've got that with the second inversion shapes. If we look at first inversion shapes, well, in a root position shape, the bottom, the first note of the scale is on your bottom finger, is on the thumb. But with a first inversion shape, you wanna start with the start of the scale on your top finger. 
So this is chord one, and we can track mainly that top finger moving. And now we've got this shape of a third and then a fourth. So this is gonna be three notes of the scale, one, two, three, and this is gonna be four notes of the scale, one, two, three, four. So now you've gotta keep that shape in your hand, but the process is essentially the same. You've gotta track three individual notes and keep an eye on when one of them is gonna pass uh, one of the black keys. So immediately our thumb is gonna move up from A to B flat, because that's the next one in the scale. And the one after that is good, is gonna be all white keys. And now that note on top, A is gonna to move to B flat. Then the next one is all white keys. The next one is all white keys. Now the A again is gonna to move to B flat. And then up one more and we're back where we started. In second inversion, it's gonna be the middle note that starts at the beginning of the scale. And now the fourth is on the bottom, one, two, three, four, and the third is on the top, one, two, three notes of the scale. The last method then is probably a little bit more fun. We're gonna come up with a short chord progression, three or four chords you can do, or you can do longer if you like, if you want more of a challenge. We can come up with the chord progression in the key of C first, then we just give a number to each of those chords, and then we transpose those chords into other keys. We don't have to do all 12 keys, you can just do it to the keys that you're currently working on. And we find which chords those numbers equal in the new keys. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So in the key of C, let's take C major, A minor, F major, G major. Look at what numbers that is. C is chord one, A minor is chord six, F major is chord four, G major is chord five. So we've got one, six, four, five. Now obviously, if you're actually playing a real song, you wouldn't be jumping around in these root positions most of the time, but this is just an exercise to get used to finding those chords in other keys. Let's look at one of the other keys we were working in, F major. So one in F major is F, then six would be one, two, three, four, five, six, D minor. Four is B flat, one, two, three, four. Up to five is, if we're on four, five must be C. So F major, D minor, B flat major, C. For more of a challenge, you could play the root notes of the chords in your left hand. You could try that in first inversions and then in second inversions. And for an extra challenge, you could try mixing up your inversions too and finding nice ways for those chords to move around. Try different chord progressions as well, different chord sequences. I hope that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content to help you learn better. If you are subscribed already, hit the notification bell so YouTube actually tells you when there's a new video out. And remember, there's links down below in the description for the worksheet, for the Patreon page, and to some other useful videos too. Thanks for watching.